Dislocated his shoulder just before half time at Wembley, and Nick Henry, suspended for the Crystal Palace game, is banned for the first two matches of this term. There are five league debuts veteran Paul McGrath and new Greek signing Vasilis Borbokis in defence, former Blackburn man Nicky Marker in midfield. Up front, it's a debut second time around for Brian Dean, and young Wayne Quinn replaces Mitch Ward, who would have been in the starting lineup, but for straining his back in training towards the end of the week. I think it's a strong-looking Sheffield United side. Obviously, big Paul McGrath back in the action. What a player he has been and still is. Trying to hold together Holdsworth and Tyler. A little bit leaky last year in vital games. And then up front, you have to look at Dean. You know, what a good buy. He's going to be welcome back here to Bramall Lane. And alongside him, obviously, Jan Agafjortov. Very, very dangerous indeed. And he proved that again that he knows where the back of the net is last season. Well, five of Sunderland's starting 11, Perez, Ball, Ord, Quinn and Gray, figured in the game at Selhurst Park that condemned the side to relegation. Of the rest, Andy Melville and Martin Scott are now fit again, Steve Agnew and Alex Ray recalled, and there are debuts for Lee Clark and Chris Makin, who displaces the unlucky Darren Williams. Another new signing, striker Kevin Phillips, is suspended, but Peter Reid's team will line up boldly in an attempt to find the goals that were so sparse last season. Paul Stewart and Craig Russell leading scorers in the league with four each, while Sheffield United had four players who were all into double figures. Yeah, I've just got a feeling Sunderland are going to go 4 3 3, three today. Peter Reid obviously worried about the lack of goals. Again, Niall Quinn up front on his own. Gray and Agnew, watch for them. Trying to get wide every possibility. And the likes of Clark, who I think has been a tremendous buy for Peter Reid. He will prove his worth. He will be the anchor man he was sitting. And Ray and Ball will be trying to spark off Niall Quinn. The big target man, he's the target. The hold-up boy looking to lay the ball off, but watch for Ball and Ray getting up as quickly as possible to sport Niall Quinn. Well, the Premiership is the dream home for every club. Sheffield United thought that they might get there last season, but to lose the playoff final at Wembley was a bit like finding your dream home, only for it to collapse the deal just as the contracts were being exchanged. And meanwhile, Sunderland found themselves evicted after that Jason Yule goal against Wimbledon on the final day. Well, yesterday, 76 days after the playoff final, Steve Coppel and Howard Kendall were reunited again, but I wonder how United fans feel at being left behind in Division 1, not only by Palace, but by their former manager. Here comes Sunderland in their new away strip for the new season and some new faces to boot. Well, I think many people watching Rob in this nationwide first division will be thinking you know, these two could certainly be battling off a place at Wembley. Many people think Sunderland could go automatically straight back up. But Sheffield United, they've certainly have learned from last year, so close to disappointment. And these, if Sheffield United are to get up into the Premier League playoffs, it's the teams like Sunderland they're going to have to beat, especially at home. Well, from the tunnel, they will emerge into an expectant atmosphere. There's nothing like the start of the season for that healthy glow of optimism from football supporters. And you can bet the home supporters are going to give this man quite a reception. Brian Dean, still very much a hero here, and now brought back from Leeds. And here comes Brian Dean. A great welcome back for him. the name that they're chanting all around Bramall Lane as he makes his debut second time around against Sunderland. Welcome back, it's a glorious day at Bramall Lane and our first live league nationwide match of the season is about to start. Sheffield United and Sunderland, our commentators Alan Brazil and Rob Hawthorne. This is the start of an extra long season with the World Cup to come in 1998 and at the end of that season the man over the ball for Sunderland here, Lee Clark, might hope to be involved in Glenn Hoddle's plans having been called up to the squad for 
Le Tournoi on the day that he joined Sunderland. And the 1997-98 season is underway here at Bramall Lane. This is Richard Ord to Martin Scott back in his hometown of Sheffield. Quinn and Mark Patterson in there for Sheffield United. And we didn't expect to be saying that about Mark Patterson this season because Patterson was seemingly on his way to a move at the back end of last season when he joined Southend on loan. Yeah, Fidey a little competitor, loves to mix it in that midfield. Here's Tyler. Make it. Paul Tyler. The header away by Andy Melville. Played forward by the new man Quinn. And the clearance by Richard Ord for the throw in. Here's Quinn. Debut for the youngster who hailed from Cornwall. And there's the other Quinn, the more familiar one, Niall Quinn, who's bound to prove a handful to the Sheffield United defence today. Yeah, it'll be interesting. It's going to be a good battle because Big Paul McGrath knows Niall very well from the Republic of Ireland days. He knows about Quinny's strengths and he'll be looking to compete and battle against the towering centre forward. The big Paul McGrath, he's been around long enough, I think he just took an Ockley's hand there. Very experienced and still quick over 10 yards. Previous 15 years of his career have been played at the very top level in the top division of England, but spurned the advances of West Ham to join up with Sheffield United on their tour of Norway pre-season. And here he is lining up on their colours on short-term deals at the moment. Lee Clark, and that was Richard Ord. It's a Sunderland throw. Chris Makin to take the throw, a player bought from Marseille by Peter Reid. Had been interested in him anyway when he was at Oldham. Simon Tracy who got the unexpected call for Wembley when Alan Kelly was injured and Kelly still suffering with that knee problem although a lot of the speculation locally is surrounding a possibility of a move for Kelly to reunite with his old manager Howard Kendall at Everton. Tracy now facing competition for his place from Andy Dibble who's on the bench. Patterson, this is Wayne Quinn. On. Yeah, many people thought maybe Alex Ray was on his way to Crystal Palace in the Premier. But Peter Reid keeping faith in him today. Fire a little Scott, good on the ball, will try and get forward to help Niall Quinn. Here's Agnew. Kevin Ball. Scott. is Gray, and he's looking to slip Scott away. Yeah, it's a combination I like on that left side with Sunderland, and this fella Martin Scott, along with Gray, they love to interplay, interpass and get forward. It's Clark's cross, Quinn, inevitably the target. Cleared to Agnew. Yeah, there's a little off the ball there with Ray and Patterson. The referee was having none of it. He was just in the box, and Ray went for sprawling. start that would be but Perez made an excellent save but Bacchus great run right across the box I thought he was going to slip it to his left because if you look on the left 
you'll see Fjortov all alone. Now, this Fjortov wants it, but the pocket says, no, I'm striking. A good build-up from Brian Dean. Well, a positive start now by Sheffield United, and Dean's pressure has now forced a corner. Yeah, smashing play from Brian Dean, that's what he's good at, holding the ball up. Apart from his aerial strength, I think he's touch. He's got a lot better touch than what people give him credit for. forward and it's Dane Whitehouse with the corner kick Brian Dean here's Bobokis cleared by Makin a bit of light relief for Sunderland he certainly looks as if he wants to get forward at every possibility Bobokis just even again there he got the ball and he was looking to probe into the Sunderland defence Tyler for Sheffield United. David Holdsworth. Too high for Dean. In the slide to make it. Wayne Quinn sticking tenaciously to his task. He's done very well, the youngster. He's got the cross in, and there was real confusion there between Perez and his defender, but somehow between them they managed to scramble it away, or for a moment looked as though he'd got in the goalkeeper's way. Yes, yeah, a bright start from Sheffield United. Good home record, United. And they're certainly going to test Sunderland out today. Yeah, passing a little bit late there on Ray. And I just feel that this little battle between Ray and Parson and Ball is going to get a little bit fiery. He only knows one way to play this fella. If he sees it, he goes 100% for it. Patterson, who not only spurned the advances of Southend, but was also due to move to Burnley, but they were a bit worried about an Achilles problem he'd picked up. He's come back and he's looked really sharp in pre-season training for Sheffield United, hence his place in the starting lineup. And here come United again with Dane Whitehouse. Dean and Bobok is out to his right, Fjortov to his left. Fjortov round making, but not round Aggie. Well, I think Fjortov must be delighted with the new summer signings, Brian Dean alongside him. And obviously Bobokis, the way he's trying to get forward. And this fellow will definitely take a weight off Fjortov's shoulders. Makin's throw in. Header away by Tyler. Here's Clark. Melville finding Scott. This is Alex Ray trying to link up with Ball. Losing out, Ray's cross. Good defending by Tyler. Getting in front of Steve Agnew. This is Scott. Quinn! Well, he got up ahead of his namesake, Wayne Quinn, did Nile. Looping header, felt kindly for Tracy. Just wondering if that came off the back of Wayne Quinn's head here. Because I think now Quinn was trying to head it back across goal. Up goes now Quinn, off, just loops it high. And just for a minute there, I thought maybe Tracy would have a problem. Now Quinn, so dangerous, just got a slight deflection, but Tracy says thank you. Right start from both teams, and Niall Quinn there with his first attempt. Peter Reid says it's like having uh, another new player in the squad, having Niall Quinn available from the start of this season. He was so badly affected by injuries last season, a serious knee injury that he picked up early in the term. Oh, given away by Ball. This is Dean. Whitehouse, who's playing a lot more in field than we saw him last season. The tackle. It's 
versus Patterson. Here's Bobokis. He's already set the pulses racing once with one run. He gets his cross in. Marker misses. Wayne Quinn. And he worked it open brilliantly. And it's a shot just over the top from the youngster. Yeah, good composure there. I just wonder if the keeper got a touch in that pair is. The referee didn't think so. But again, Bobokis. Super run again, gets forward. Now look at this touch for the youngster. Comes inside on the right foot, blasts it, and just high over for a goal kick. But good composure on the right foot. Maybe try to bend it to the far post. And out over the top. Wayne Quinn, who was given a chance on the Norway tour, and also came on for the second half of the pre-season friendly against Blackburn, which Sheffield United won 2-1. Brian Dean going for this, scored within... 30 seconds of the start with his first touch. Well, no goals, but an exciting start. I think Nigel Spatton will be delighted with his side at the moment, especially with the width that they're creating. And when you get Dean and Fjort off in the middle, that's exactly where you want to get it, out on the flanks and whip the crosses in. Mark picking out Scott. And here's all. Now in the target, beyond him, and beyond David Holdsworth. I'm just wondering, Rob, I thought Sunderland down the left-hand side have got a lot of sparkle with Scott, especially this fella Gray. Well, I'm just concerned now, I think Bobokas has sort of said to him, hey, they tell me you're a good player, but you're going to have to worry about me today, son. Because Bobokas at the moment, bursting forward. And Michael Gray now and Scott have got a problem with them. Well, I think this midfield battle, Rob, is going to be uh, tremendous today, and I just. I'd like to see uh, Lee Clark, you know, it's Sunderland's new signing. I'd love to see him more on the ball. At the moment, he's the, the game's sort of passing him by. He normally likes to control the ball with the ball at his feet and picking out passes, but at the moment, it's bypassing him. Make it. Ray again, I'm happy there about a challenge with uh, Patterson. There have been one or two little skirmishes between that pairing. Here's Scott. Kevin Ball. Melville. Makin. This is Agnew. Well, it almost fell kindly, but... Uh, Alex Ray just couldn't connect. I think, I think Sunderland are going to slowly build this up. Ray almost on the end of that. Again, try to get in the box, Alex Ray, but Sunderland with their patient build-up, whereas Sheffield United a little bit quicker getting forward. Scott. Well, it's uh, six weeks since Sheffield United lost the services of Howard Kendall. They've only just advertised the job, and Nigel Spackman's hoping that if they get off to a good start to this season, then his hopes of filling the vacancy permanently will be considerably boosted. Yeah, he's a lovely fellow, Nigel, good player. Maybe the, his age is just getting a little bit too much for him to play now, but in his day, quality midfield player, and I wish him well. He's obviously been taking the best soundings before taking on the job. He's been speaking to uh, Glenn Hoddle, who in his time was a player manager, and although Spatman's registration has been retained, he's decided to concentrate on the management side of it, certainly at the beginning of the season. I think the players now begin to slow down a wee bit, because I promise you, it's hot up in this gantry and it must be boiling on that pitch. Yes, there have been searing temperatures throughout this first weekend, which means that energy conservation is a
vital part for the players. Clark now looking for Quinn. He looked a decent ball, but uh, maybe the heat's already getting to Niall Quinn. Yeah, Clark will try and find them. You know, he give him a little bit of space in the ball, Lee Clark, clever player. Good quality control, but also will hit them long-ranging passes. Here's Clark. Melville. but Quinn doing his job well there he is a handful, such a big lad holding up, but Paul McGrath saying the ref, come on ref, he's backing into me you can see Quinn holding up was a handball, gets half a yard but can't hit the target Quinn and Paul McGrath who were uh, lining up in Ireland's colours together at Italia 90, know each other very well exchanged a friendly word or two before the game head of I. Dean. Ray aiming for Niall Quinn. That's the problem Sunderland have got there. Ray hit him fine. Niall Quinn towering above defender, but no one in support. It's difficult. It's a, a dilemma Peter Ridge has got. He wants more goals, but he does like a solid midfield. But now and again, someone's got to make that charge, that chance to get up with Quinn. Well, it looked like handball from Ray, but the referee's let play go on. I see, no, he hasn't. He's uh, consulted with his assistant and. Simon Tracy's appeal is vindicated. Yeah, interesting there. Now Quinn was shaking his head, Ray was shaking his head. It was a handball, we'll see that. Tracy whacks it and clearly left hand save. <laughs> One up for the referee, George Kane from Bootle. Clark putting the pressure on Tyler, forcing him to concede the corner. George Kane was definitely right there. The Tyler was a little bit silly there. I thought that was complete, blatant obstruction. And can they pay from this corner? It's Gray with a corner, the big guns forward. Richard Ord came in, headed away there by Tyler. Yeah, There's a good header from Tyler there. Had to make it. Ray. Clearly yeah, thought he'd been fouled by Bobokis. Well, this meeting of the two managers, Nigel Spackman and Peter Reid, brings together former Merseyside rivals, but also former teammates. They were together at Queen's Park Rangers for a good nine months, joined within a few weeks of each other and left within a few weeks of each other. Spackman to go to the other Rangers, north of the border, and Reid to go to Manchester City. Yeah, I spoke to him last night, Peter, and he's under no illusions how difficult this league will be to try and get back into the Premiership. And it's a hard start for them, away to Sheffield United. They've just gone a little bit quiet last couple of minutes, Rob, after a good opening from the home side. Here's Holdsworth with the throw. Dean. Give him the service, he'll win the flick on. So it's getting on to the second ball. Looking for Dean again. Here's Bobokis. The challenge by Martin Scott. I think Sunderland have got to do something here. Scott was the one who was marking Dean, trying to get in front of him, but I just feel that Melville or Ord has got to get closer to him. Once again, Dean going on to Martin Scott. This could be dangerous. Long throw from Holdsworth. Headed away by Ord. Back to him. Fjortoft. Well, very uncertain. Dean 
Gaines here in the end, but real moments of anxiety, these. I don't understand that, you know, Martin Scott was the man who was sitting in front, Fjortov was locking. Once it's headed back in, Fjortov has a half a chance here. Just getting in front of Melville, but can't get the right foot volley away. Fjortov's partnership with uh, Brian Dean has still to work out. There is some speculation as to who would be partnering the uh, new old boy. Peter Kachuro is on the bench, if they do decide to change things later. This is Scott. Clark. Alex Ray. Patterson snapping away once more. Some fans like that. They like Ray, he's a player with um, tremendous ability. Clark looking for Quinn. Here's Kevin Ball. Back to Niall Quinn. Well, it was a thunderous effort. Well, what a goal that would have been. I'm, I'm not quite sure that Kevin Ball meant to play that back to Niall Quinn. If it was, it was someone too. But now Quinn, wasting no time, thinks, right, this is, this is a nice height, I'm going to hit this right-footed. Gets a good strike, I think it was always going high, but it wasn't too far away. things up for Sheffield. Sheffield were quick getting forward, especially down the right-hand side, but now the Sunderland midfield are beginning to retain possession. <laughs> Melville's foul on Jan Fjortoft. <laughs> Dean or Fjortoft. Neither picked out as Sheffield United played short. This is Wayne Quinn. And headed away by Niall Quinn, but uh, the flag was already up. Uh, Quinny, whether it had been defence or offence, very, very strong in the air. Had his fair shares of injuries, as you said, Rob. And I think when you're as tall as Niall Quinn, I think taller people do tend to get more injuries. When you're small and maybe better balanced, you can ride tackles, or if you fall, you bounce up. Whereas big, tall strikers sometimes have a problem. Quinn was injured after the first eight games of last season, but uh, came back as the last rights were performed on Sunderland's Premiership season. He was part of the team at Selhurst Park that got relegated. The other Quinn giving the ball away to Ray. Lee Clark. Gray, Michael Gray, no, McGraw stepped out of the way. Well, about 23 minutes, Rob, and that's the first real, you know, a touch of the ball, decent touch that Michael Gray's had. Good build-up again from Sunderland, and this is where, the, in this league, they're not going to give many goals away, Rob. Doesn't hit the target, but they've got so many players, ball players in midfield, they make it difficult for the opposition. The problem they've got is when they get it forward to the lone striker, is there enough time to get up and support them quickly? And again, you're looking at maybe lack of goals, but Sunderland will be a hard team to beat in this division. Sunderland had last season and on the bench they have a man who's shown great potential to rattle them in, Michael Bridges. And got a hat-trick in the reserves in the week against Crook Town. It's that attack, what I'm saying, that, that just emphasised what I'm saying, Rob. You know, Quinn with a great layoff, Gray flies up the left-hand side and immediately whips the ball into the box, looking for this fella. But Michael Gray just had to use his head a little bit there. Quinn was the one who laid it off, he couldn't possibly get in the box. Deep. And Whitehouse 
chance has burst up on the left outside him, and he's found him. Dane Whitehouse has got Dean and Marker in the box, oh, pushed away by Perez. But still Sunderland in trouble. Dean has broken it up brilliantly. Can he finish? Whitehouse, Fjortoft was retreating from an offside position, and in the meantime, Clark wins it back for Sunderland. Yeah, certainly a half a chance here for Sheffield United. Perez made a good stop, no doubt about it. Whitehouse was in two minds, but Perez was up to the strike. Good stop. Marker. Marker himself was getting in the box there, Rob, but Whitehouse decided to fire it across the goal. McGrath's free kick flicked on by Fjortov. Dean! No! Oh, he's lifted it over the bar! Yeah, he's looking the part, isn't he, Brian Dean? And there was a push as well. Melville's beginning to find it tough against Brian Dean. And when this ball's flicked on, I think Melvin gives him a definitely gives him a push here. Let's have a look. Just a little shove there, but Dean's still strong and can't keep it down. Another half chance for Sheffield United. Dean's strength, right foot just over the top. Anderson. Well, Brandine has scored on his league debut after his previous two transfers. Scored against Reading on his previous debut for Sheffield United back in 1988. And then scored against Manchester City when he made his first appearance for Leeds some four years ago. I guess he was the Manchester City manager at the time, one Peter Reid, who was then sacked 12 days later, just four games into the new season. I think a lot of City fans wish he was. And that's nothing against Frank Clark, but I think people felt he wasn't given a chance at Manchester City. Gray. Marker. Here's Scott. Clark. Quinn to Ray. Stay on side. Yeah, Ray was a little bit unlucky there because Agnew had made a great run. And it really had to be a first time ball, but the ball came back to Ray a little bit too fast. A good intricate passing. Ray. This is Niall Quinn. And Kevin Ball this time has stayed on side. Michael Gray up in support. Can he provide the service that Sunderland have been looking for? Just beyond ball. Wow. And Kevin Ball, that was a chance, because I felt Kevin Ball was offside. The linesman down to her right wasn't given it. And had Kevin Ball's touch been good, Sheffield were in trouble. There's no doubt about it. Gray coming inside. Loads of time in the ball, shaping up against holes. It comes inside. Have a look there. And if Kevin Ball had controlled this, well, he was certainly onside. This was a time, this, this time Sunderland did get midfield players forward. And I'm sure Peter Reid's encouraging them. When you see the chance, get forward, take a chance. Very nonsense stuff there from Whitehouse against Ray. Sunderland have certainly had the better of it so far. I think the home side started well, Rob, but suddenly now Sunderland's with uh, the congested midfield. There's plenty of gold jerseys in there, beginning to not run the game, but getting more on top. United flying out the blocks again. Dean's cross, oh, Bobakis' effort, and he's thwarted again. But Bobakis certainly isn't afraid to get into the right sort of positions. Wow, well, where did he come from? Incredible. One minute he's back there watching Michael Gray. Dean gets a lovely touch. Look at the Bacchus lose his marker. And all he had to 
do was make contact as Brian Dean finds him lovely. And to be honest, Scott done well to get back and get a foot in. He'd lost Scott, but Scott's lunging challenge blocks the strike. And he's won the corner. White has his kick. Here's Wayne Quinn. The flick on was Tyler's, and Fjortov nearly got there, but Perez took command of the situation. Yeah, good goalkeeping, because Fjortov is just beginning to think about his first goal in the new season. Well won by Patterson from Ball. Cleared by Melville. Sunderland really with their backs to the wall at the moment. They've been a lot more controlled in their play, but in terms of excitement in flying out of the blocks, it's been Sheffield United who've set things going. Here's Gray. Ball's turned up again in a useful position, slipping in behind Marker. But Gray couldn't get it across to him. Here's Bobokis. Whitehouse. Now Wayne Quick. Yeah, lucky from Quinn there. He was looking at a little look there. Where's my front players? He wanted to dink it up to Fjortov's feet, but there was no run from the front men, which meant he had to go down the line. Fjortov winning the free kick. Well, some people felt last season Fjortov was overplay acting, diving, trying to get other players in trouble. Let's hope he's too good a player. Let's hope we don't see that this season. Well, Bokis and Whitehouse over the free kick. Oh, Flix Hedrick's there! Jan Arga Fjortov to start the season off with a goal. 32 minutes into the game. Sheffield United lead 1-0. Beautifully, just a lovely little death flick from Jan Aga. And I was just saying, none of this play acting because now you can play act because he is a top goal scorer. Once again, Babakis involved. Look at that for a beautiful flick. Perez, no chance. The dummy from White House, Babakis whips it in right footed. Perfect delivery. And Jan Aga Fortov just rising with a lovely flick in the far corner. And now we have a game in our hands. Good start, good goal from Sheffield United. What have Sunderland got to offer? Yeah, and Arga Fjortov, who used to play for Sunderland's rivals in the northeast, Middlesbrough. And got three goals in the final four games of that campaign as they finished off as first division champions. And Jan Arga Fjortov, who made a great goal-scoring start in Sheffield United's colours, is hoping that this season he'll be able to produce enough goals to spiral Sheffield United into the Premiership. Yeah, I thought it was a beautiful goal. Lovely delivery, good run for Yortov, and just guiding it into the far corner. And that's given the home supporters who were beginning to go a little bit quiet. Now you can hear the Bramall Lane noise. A dream start to the season for Jan Arga Fjortov. 11 goals he managed last season, eight of them in his first nine games. But when the goals dried up, these fans wondered if the investment was a shrewd one, but he's through again here. And he's got Dean up ahead of him, and he does go down on the edge of the box again. But this time, nothing given against Richard Ord. Well, they're certainly going to be a handful, Rob, Dean and Fjortov. Just before the, before the game, when we got the lineups, I thought, yeah, this looks a strong Sheffield side. Solid. Scott. Ball to Gray. away from David Holdsworth. Ray has joined Quinn and Agnew in the box, but it's cleared by McGrath. Yeah, once again, big Paul McGrath using his head, using his brain. Great positional sense, this fella. Yeah, he's getting on in years, terrible injury problems, but when it comes to thinking about the football game, he's one of the best. I think Michael Gray, I think that's... Gray has got to get against Holdsworth. I think Bobokis... Bobokis, <laughs> trying to get that right. I think he's got the pace to cope with Gray, but if he can get Holdsworth isolating that left-hand side, he will get past him to get the crosses in for Quinn. Clark. Up by Marker, and now here's 
Tyler. This is Dean. And this time it feels off and straight offside. Yeah, it will take a little, take a few weeks to get this understanding. Perfectly right. But Dean showing tremendous strength here. Fjortov wanted it earlier, but Dean couldn't deliver this time. Dean seemed to make the brighter start, and Fjortoft at the beginning looked fairly quiet, but he's really made an impact on this game now. Yeah, he's a goal scorer, isn't he? He just sniffs out chances. He knows where to, to be in the right place at the right time. See a little bit more of Agnew down this right hand side. Sunderland really threatening on the left, but not so much down the right. Steve Agnew, who works so hard, very willing, needs a little bit more supply of the ball. Patterson aiming it towards Brian Dean, and Perez came and lost it, and all oh, got him out of trouble. I was just about to say, good goalkeeping there, because I could see him racing off his line. For the last second, just dropping it with the presence of Dean around him. Made the right decision to come, Rob, but this fella's presence, he just couldn't hang on to it. Long hopeful ball. Perez spotted it early, out he came and just got underneath it. And that was a let off. Short off. Well, Bokis has again turned up with a central striking position. Dean was the target. Patterson. More football coming up for you later on Sky Sports 1. Tottenham against Manchester United, the opening game of Super Sunday at 3 o'clock. First Monday night football of the new season, Arsenal against Coventry from 7 o'clock, and then Tuesday it's the Coca-Cola Cup with Queen's Park Rangers against Wolves first round, first leg tie at Loftus Road. That's on Sky Sports 3 from 7.30. A corner here to Sheffield United. Their opening goal came from a free kick. What can they make of this set play? Bobok is available for the short one for Dane Whitehouse. But he's opted to float it straight in. And again, Perez had a player in his way. It was Niall Quinn. This is Patterson. Fjortoft. Nothing on the shot. Yeah, a little bit theatrical there, Fjortoft. Tried to just get half a yard and bend it with his right foot, but he wasn't going to beat Perez there. He's beaten Perez once already, though. It was a touch-and-go situation as to whether Lionel Perez started as first-choice goalkeeper for... Sunderland, now that they have another continental import, Edwin Zutabaya. But he doesn't even make the bench today because while Sheffield United have opted to keep a goalkeeper in reserve, Sunderland have chosen not to. Quinn uh, shake his head there. It's difficult for that fella up there, you know, he's battling to win these flick-ons, and when he does, he needs support. And again, no one alongside him. Well, Agnew and Gray have switched sides for the moment. That's McGrath's clearance. There is Agnew. <laughs> Strong challenge there from Hillsworth. Actually, a few moments ago, Holdsworth would got far in advance, but I've seen him down on the right wing trying to get crosses in. So Nigel Spackman, there's no doubt about it, he said to his, his chaps, look, if you feel like it and you feel like going forward, stay forward, we'll cover for you. He's the man who's attacking him. Well, Tyler paired again in the Sheffield United defence with 
Paul McGrath, with whom he played at Aston Villa, although for one reason or another they only played a handful of games in the same team. That was a challenge by Scott on Bobakis, which has produced a yellow card for Martin Scott, the Sunderland defender. According to Scott, he's very, very angry. He's saying that I never touched you, get up. But Bobakis is certainly in no rush to get up. And Martin Scott, well, let's have a look. I thought it was a late challenge. Does he catch the defender? Of course he does. And that is a free kick. I'm sorry, Martin. Whack. When you dive in like that and you come from a long distance, you really have to get the ball wrong. And if you're a fraction late, there's every right, there's every, well, the yellow card has to come out, I think. Meanwhile, the player he's left injured, uh, Bobokis, has proved that he could be quite a handful in the first division this season. He's back up again now. Yeah, he looks, he looks some by, doesn't he? Oh. Holdsworth with the free kick. Agnew. This is Makin. And the four Lee Clark. Ray. Oh, give it away to Fjortoft. Well, Bokis has made another good run, hasn't he just? What a goal! took full advantage and it's a goal on his league debut well this guy couldn't have started any better I had a suspicion of offside but there's no way it was a beautiful ball from Fjortov but what a finish from Babakis Perez no chance good awareness of Fjortov but look at this run he leaves Scott for dead composes himself oh 2-0 what a strike superb debut this is right into the stanchion and what a game this fella's having. Fjortov plays his part, but what a finish. And Sunderland uphill fit, uphill task now. 2-0 to Sheffield United and Bobokis, who'd produced a fine save from Perez earlier in the match, gave the goalkeeper no chance with that superb finish. Signed for £750,000 from AEK Athens, this man Bobokis, he was a player they noticed when they'd actually gone to watch uh, Tamur Ketsbaya, who has since joined Newcastle. The Bokis, though, was recommended for the position that they wanted to fill, and he's filling it in spectacular fashion at the moment. I wonder if we get any more in here, Key Athens. Goodness me, what a good, what a good player this fella looks. Well, can Sunderland get one back before half-time, or Peter Reid's going to have to change it? He must be thinking to himself, the one up front, and we're not getting up quick enough to support now, Quinn. And maybe Bridges might be on second half. Here's Ray. Just trying to give a little bit of hope to Sunderland before half-time, but it's not to be. And Nigel Spackman must really be preening himself at the transfer activity in which Sheffield United have engaged over the close season. I must be delighted. Peter, Peter well, less, uh, it's a long season, he knows that, Reedy, but won't be happy at the moment, two down. I just wonder, I get the feeling that down the right-hand side, Agnew, we're not seeing a lot of Agnew. And perhaps if someone's to be sacrificed, it may be him. Clearance by McGraw. Nice time to score a second goal for the Sheffield man. And what a beautiful goal that was. Quinn. Kevin Ball! Well, Kevin Ball, in the game we covered uh, the new stadium, Stadium of Light against Ajax, he was the one for me, he surprised me. He was getting forward so much to try and support the lone striker. And once again arriving in the box, just couldn't keep it down enough. It was Sunderland's away form that really let them down when they were relegated last season. Starting with their 5-0 defeat at Old Trafford in December, they won just one of their last 11 league games away from their home then, Roker Park. And this doesn't look like the most auspicious of starts at the moment. Now, there are not enough chances in front of the goal for me, Rob. Bridges, I think, is a certainty. If he doesn't come on at half-time, it won't be long into the second half. I just wonder who could be sacrificed. Ball, he, he likes to sit there tough in midfield, whereas... 
Gray, we've not seen too much of Gray, have we? With no real telling runs or telling crosses into the box, which you need when you've got Quinn in there. Into stoppage time in the first half. Here's Quinn. between Dean and Agnew has excited the crowd. Yeah, I think Dean was getting a bit excited as well. They think he's Frank Bruno, but <laughs> it was good strength there, and the fans here love them, but just overdoing it a wee bit. Poor old Agnew, he's the one that comes off well. Clark goes in, but Dean's body strength. Now Agnew goes in to join in, and Dean tries to be a little bit clever, tries to throw a dummy, and all of a sudden it's um, out come the handbags here, and Agnew's the one who ends up in the deck. Dean very strong, and down he goes. And there goes the half-time whistle and just the sort of half-time score that Sheffield United needed. Jan Argafjortov starting the season off by heading in the free kick from Vasilis Borbokis. But the new Greek star really is the star of this first half, having rounded it off with the second goal that puts Sheffield United in firm control. It was his free kick, remember, that Fjortov connected with to open the scoring. And then a superbly threaded through ball here puts Bobokis in an ideal position, an exemplary finish and a goal on his league debut. And already he's won over the fans here. They're delighted, 2 0 half time. Right now, Sheffield United against Sunderland, half time, 2 0 to the home side. And we have a new star in the making, I think. Let's have a, a check on the match facts. And Sheffield United's dominance is fairly easy to ascertain. Eight attempts to five, and crucially, two goals to nil. Sunderland just one shot on target, and only one corner to three. Not been a, a dirty game, one or two uh, incidents that caught the eye. A couple of times Sheffield United have been caught offside. Some of them really haven't got forward enough to uh, cause those sort of problems. And just the one booking so far. And as far as the uh, action areas are concerned, well, interestingly, Sunderland with 58% uh, of the ball. Sheffield United only uh, 42. But when they've had the ball in the key areas, they have been the danger team. And certainly we do, I think, have a new star in the making. Borbokis, Vasilis Borbokis, £750,000 from AEK Athens in the summer. And goodness me, he's made a mark pretty quickly. The Bradford manager, Chris Kamara, has been watching the first half. Uh, Chris, did you know much about Borbokis uh, before today? Not at all, but certainly if ever a, a role was made for a player, uh, it's Bobokis. That wing-back role suits him down to the ground. Not only is he getting forward and terrorising the Sunderland defence, um, he's getting back and he's making tackles, and they don't know where to pick him up. The, the left side midfield player Gray doesn't know whether to pick him up, the left back doesn't know whether to pick him up. They're not sure, so he's creeping in from that right-hand side, unnoticed, and he's had two excellent strikes uh, along with the goal. Yeah, he was a handful from the very first minute. We can uh, now see the first goal, and uh, Borbokis instrumental in it. As you say, his ball in, and uh, Fjortov, who went through a bit of a barren spell towards the end of last season, uh, was in the right place at the right time. Terrific technical ability from Bob, Bob, Boris, that's easy for me to see, with his right foot. Uh, he's chipped at him with his right foot, Inst uh, goal scorer's goal, that in it. He knows where the goal is, but look at Brian Dean, if it slightly misses the target, Brian Dean's there to touch it in as well. Great goal, great ball in. Have you uh, assessed the Dean partnership up front with Fjortov? A lot of talk about it before the match. Um, well, Brian Dean's showing that since he's come back from Leeds, he's more of a complete player. 
He's not just uh, a person who can get on the end of flick-ons. He's holding the ball at will. His tenacity in the tackle, he hasn't, I don't think he's lost the ball when it's been a 50-50 challenge or even 30-70 against him. His strength, his power, the way he's brought people into the game. And he's a perfect foil for someone like Fyotov because Fyotov isn't the hardest of workers and he's doing what he does best. Well, here's the second goal and now Fyotov turns provider. And what about that for a finish? As just said, this fella's technical ability is unbelievable. Like I said, the, the, the first goal is the chipping with his right foot, now this is with his left foot. He's going away from the goals, that's as well. The goalkeeper's covered all his angles, and he's put a tremendous strike in the far corner. And I, I admire Fjortov's pass here, because I napped him to shoot there. He didn't shoot, he's turned the ball inside. Now watch this for technical ability. S assesses the ball, left foot. There's only one place that was going once he connected. Very sweet finish indeed and Sheffield United very much in the box seat at half-time in our first live nationwide league game of the season. It's Sheffield United 2, Sunderland 0 at half-time. Those United supporters who suffered so much at Wembley in the playoff final are suddenly realising that football isn't such a, a bad old business after all. They're in charge. Join us again after the break. A reminder of the big Premiership game coming up today at 3 o'clock over on Sky Sports 1. Live from White Hart Lane, Spurs take on the champions, Manchester United. Today at 3 on Sky Sports 1. Right now, Sunderland have to find a spark from somewhere. 2-0 down at half-time. There has been a substitution. More on that from our commentators, Alan Brazil and Rob Hawthorne. Sunderland need goals and Michael Bridges has shown himself adept at getting two when coming off the bench before. He did it against Everton last season, he did it against Huddersfield the season before and he's coming on for Kevin Ball now in an attempt to get the goals that Sunderland so desperately require. And you like this man, don't you, Alan? Yeah, I do. I've not seen too much about him, but what he has got is genuine pace. And he does like to always, he's always looking for that ball over the top to try and get in behind the likes of McGrath and Tyler. He will definitely cause them more problems. Along with Quinn, I think it's the right choice. It's easy to say at 2-0 down, we have to make a, a, a change. But I think Peter Reid said, right, it's not working. We're not getting forward enough to support now, Quinn. Go on, son, get alongside Quinny and, and worry them with your pace. Well, the fact that Kevin Ball has gone off has necessitated another change, and that's in the captaincy, which has been taken over for this second half by Richard Ord. I just felt maybe Agnew, you know, he wasn't involved too much offensively and I felt he might have come off, but Peter Reid obviously feels that Kevin wasn't, you know, wasn't digging enough, wasn't seeing a lot of the ball and wasn't getting him forward to support Quinn enough. False start to the second half. Brian Dean a bit over-enthusiastic. Sheffield United to get this uh, second period underway. Visibly lifted by the two goals that they've scored and the crowd really reveling in the performance of Bobokis, the new man. He and Fjortoft have been involved in both of the goals. Bobokis set up the first for Fjortoft and the uh, compliment was returned for the second. Whitehouse retreating from an offside position. They had it back by Melville. That is there very quickly picking the ball up and getting rid of it quickly. Which obviously goalkeepers now have to be very careful with. What I'm puzzled about, Rob, is the rule is between, you know, they're saying five or six seconds. That is ridiculous. How can you make a rule five <laughs> or six seconds? It's either five or six. I was at a game yesterday where every time the goalkeeper picked the ball up, the crowd counted for the referee. I think they should leave the rules alone, mate. Well, Lionel Perez will have some sympathy from today's referee because uh, George Kane actually used to be a goalkeeper. Well, Sunderland need a quick, a quick reply, don't they? 2 0 down, had lots of possession, no real goal threat, and they're going to have to take a few chances now, push forward quicker. Certain a large following they brought with them again must be, you know, they, they must be really concerned about lack of goals. Oh, 
free kick to Sunderland, and it's Richard Ord to take it. Andy Melville, Makin. Quinn, who's hoping that his workload will be eased in the second half by the presence of the young Bridges. Clark, under pressure from Marker. Here's Makin. Clark. Ord. There's Michael Gray. Bridges wanted it played short. Possibilities here for Sunderland with a free kick. Quinny's a target, but Ord and Melville, they can really, a few dummy runs from Quinn, they can maybe sneak in. Clark aiming to provide, it's headed away by Brian Dean, straight to Scott. Here's Makin. This was my time. I just get the feeling, you know, we're the talk of Sunderland's midfield, but I just feel that Sheffield United, especially with Patterson, he's been the man who's really been destroying once again on the ball again this little fair. He's the one who's been making it difficult. Well, it's a Lee Clark ball who's now been substituted and Alex Ray. He's got through a tremendous lot of work, Rob. Agnew. Ray. Patterson in on him again. Clark. Scott. Agnew. Clearance from McGraw, comes back to Bridges. And it's gone behind for the corner. Just feel here, Sunderland obviously looking for a way back into this match, and Sheffield United have started very slow the second half. Sunderland need the early breakthrough if they're to have any chance at all of getting all three points in this fixture. It's Clark's corner. It's Melville's header. Ray going for it. Yeah, Ray and Quinn both sort of getting in each other's way there. But really, you know, that's that's probably Sunderland's second shot on goal. Something like that tells you a story. Melville at the far post gets it forward. Quinn and Ray both going for it, and that is certainly not going to trouble Tracy. Makin. This is Melville. Ray. This time we got away from the snapping Patterson and from Whitehouse too. Yeah, Alex Ray will be very disappointed there. Gets through a lot of work, Alex Ray. Good quick feet, but. When you get wide like that and free of Patterson, the final ball's got to be better. Oh, that's a dangerous header back. Fjortoft. I think that was a case of having too much time on the ball there, Rob. Fjortoft acknowledges sorry, he says to Brian Dean, because that was certainly a mistake in the Sunderland defence. Fjortoft gets onto it quick here, Melville heads it back. Fjortoft quickly looks up, he sees Brian Dean, but the left peg, well, it didn't work that time. Fjortov not making the most of it, much to Andy Melville's relief. Patterson. And here's Holdsworth. Scott. Clark. Clark 
Clark's the one who looks to try and get off the back for Rob. But alongside him, he's got people going forward. Dean. Here's Patterson. There's acres of space for Quinn. Quickly closed down there by Makin. This is Mark Patterson. McGrath aiming for Dean and finding him. Yeah, Fjorkov had spun away to Dean's right-hand side. Dean wasn't aware of it, flicked it the other way. Gray, Sunderland will be hoping for plenty from him in this second 45 minutes. And also from Bridges. But even with his useful enthusiasm, he's forced McGrath there to concede the corner. Yeah, he's a type of player, if you play against him as a centre-half, he... He would worry you because he's always looking to get in behind Young Bridges and he's very, very quick. Sometimes makes runs offside too often, but he'll learn as he gets older. Clark's corner, Quinn. And clearance by Nicky Marker. You can almost see, Rob, when Quinn does win the headers down, you can always see him despairing as there's a Sheffield United player picks a knockdown up rather than one of his Sunderland teammates. Peter Reid said that uh, Niall Quinn had been looking a class act in the pre-season friendlies, but it's from today that the games that matter are taking place, and Quinn at the moment is uh, lacking in support. Well, also, I think Sunderland's problem is the wide players, Gray and Agnew, are not getting down the flank to get the service in. And when you have two wide players not involved, Rob, sometimes you lose out in the middle of midfield. Here's a chance for Sunderland to use their width. Making has Agnew outside him. And they cross the flex behind for a corner. Off Wayne Quinn. That's better from Agnew. If he can get forward more, and maybe with a little bit better service into the box, it'd be much better. You know, we've seen what Babakis has done for Sheffield United. He has got forward and caused trouble. But as a Sunderland wide player, they've not had the same results. Quinn has so far been a frustrated peripheral figure, but he may well benefit from this corner. It's Gray's corner, and it's Melville's header, skimming right across the fence. Better delivery from Gray this time. Melville certainly gets up high, just can't direct it. Oh, it was, a, it was just a glance, wasn't it? And Paul McGrath delighted to see it go wide. Well, Sunderland have certainly been making a, a decent fist of it and level at attempts with Sheffield United, although noticeably fewer on target. And really, they do have a very poor opening day record in recent seasons to Sunderland. This is Wayne Quinn, and Fjortoft was offside anyway. I think that Nigel's got to be delighted with his new signings. Quinn obviously come through the youth ranks. Just fjord off, you can see clearly, half a yard offside. Clark, Bridges. And here's Dean. Just getting a bit frustrated, Sunderland, aren't they? Because Sheffield United are pulling, tugging, snapping at the heels, really putting them out of their rhythm. Make into Clark. Here's Scott. Up by McGraw. Gray. Quinn arriving. Bridges. Well shut out by Nicky Marker. This is Scott. Sunderland starting to look more menacing. Gray, always a danger when he's in possession, through Patterson. Here's Chris Makin. Sheffield United squeeze back to the edge of their own area. Scott now has to try and pierce that defence. Gray. Gray looking to curl one in, but it's cleared by McGrath. Yeah, he just needed runners there, Michael Gray. Come inside, lots of time. He needed movement. The Sheffield United are holding strong. 
spark. United showed a lot of defensive strength last season on their way to reaching the playoffs, and they're holding out at the moment here, despite all this pressure. Quinn, and here's Steve Agnew! Goalkeeper well behind it, good save from Tracy. Yeah, Sunderland now trying to up the tempo now. It's a good ball, Quinn, that's what he wants, and now who's he going to pick out? It's Agnew, who drives it straight at Tracy. Good prolonged pressure now from Sunderland. Well, Sunderland carry on probing. Agnew then was offering real hope. Ord. Ray to Gray. And the block was by Jan Argafjortoft, and that could well be his last contribution because they're waiting actually to bring him off. And it's a change that is taking place now. Fjortov seems puzzled by it, but he's already made this crucial contribution to Sheffield United today. Well, they must be disappointed because this is a lovely goal, lovely glancing header, and the way he looked at the bench tells me, hey, what's going on? You know, I, I think Nigel Spikeman just feels OK. We've gone a bit flat for the opening 10, 13 minutes. Come on, let's raise it again. Let's have a change. Well, last time we saw Peter Couturo, he was uh, looking in disgust at being taken off after about uh, 25 minutes at Wembley in the playoff final. But here he is now with his chance, and he already has won a free kick. Yeah, Couturo's not a bad substitute to bring on either. International player, Belarus, and he knows with the back of the net is as well. Maybe Nigel Spikeman feels, OK, let's see how he can work with Ryan Dean. Peter Couturo and uh, Janago Fjortoft two of the four Sheffield United players who went into double figures last season in terms of their league goal scoring. Gareth Taylor and Andy Walker, the others, still at the moment on Sheffield United staff, but it seems that they do have an embarrassment of riches as far as strikers are concerned. Well, they got a few goals as well, Rob. I might correct me if I'm wrong, but I think Bolton were the only team that scored more. Yes, they certainly rattled them in regularly during the course of last season, four in their opening league match here, but the trouble was that they let in 4-2 against Birmingham. Here's Scott, header away by McGrath. So once again there, Rob, Scott getting the cross in. But who's there again but this fella? He's so clever in terms of posi positional sense. And once again, it's, he's more or less saying to Scott, you've got to give me the perfect cross for me to miss it. Gray's corner. Ord! Headed away by Dean. Well, sustained pressure here, and Dean Whitehouse, well, what a good spot that was. Because Sunderland are certainly upping the tempo, heading for the bottom corner, and Whitehouse doing his job in the post. Tracy totally beat. Sunderland might still have a chance in this game if they can score here at the hour mark. It's Gray's corner. To cause any serious disturbance before Holdsworth clears. Good pressure, this though, from Sunderland in the second half. Just look how they've dominated. Well, not forgetting first half as well, Rob, they had a lot of possession, didn't they? But they didn't have the killer touch in front of the goal. And again, it's eluding them, they need a bit of luck now. But definitely looking more dangerous now. Bridges is alongside Big Now Quinn. They really do seem to have turned up the heat in the second half. They were playing a lot more conservatively before the break. Oh, when you're 2-0 down as well, you have to take chances, and I'm sure Peter Reid has said, come on, 2-0 down, you've got to claw your way back into this match. If we get one, we can, they might just, you know, they might just go a little bit Sheffield, so come on. Here's Wayne Quinn. Dane Whitehouse. Dean and Cachorro both waiting inside the penalty area. seen a lot of Whitehouse getting forward, 
this time in an advanced position, but the final delivery, well, they want a lot better than that. Responsibilities. Was she saying there, Dad? Why did they take you off? <laughs> well, maybe he's saying, Why didn't they bring me on? Make my mind up for me, since his teammates. Bridges called for it and got it from Makin. Makin has gone into the box. McGrath again showing his great experience. It's the 37-year-old against the youthful impetuosity of Michael Bridges. Yeah, there's no doubt he's not as fit as he used to be, the big fella, but Bridges trying to test his pace. As I said earlier, over 10 yards, Paul McGrath is still very quick. Well, Sunderland haven't won their opening league fixture in the last seven seasons. Their last opening day win was back in August 1989 at Swindon. It was uh, one of your old mates, Eric Gates, on the score sheet that day. Yeah, well, I did. I don't tell him, he's just along the gantry wanting radio and his head's big enough, Gatesy. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hear from Jan Algofjortoft, who's on the score sheet today, is with Alan Bentley. Jan, you must be delighted with the goal. Well, I'm, I'm delighted with the goal because it was a very, hard, hard, a very hard start. It was very hot to that. I think I went 20 minutes without touching the ball. And to be fair to some of they're doing a very difficult for us. But absolutely, we're delighted with the goal and uh, the assist as well. It's always good for a striker to give something back. Oh! Just how hot is it out there? Well, the feet's like 200 degrees, but then again, I'm a Norwegian, so it's probably a bit hot for me. <laughs> and why is it you're off? Uh, I think you've got to ask the, the gaff about that, but I think it's like we're only running after the game now, and, and my game is in the box and around the box, and I think I want to put some fresh legs on, and Kachur is a very quick football player. So okay. it's probably a right decision. All right, thanks a lot, Jan. Nice diplomatic answer there. That's the manager. Is it fair to say he's seething <laughs> Free kick to Sheffield United, Scott the offender, player has already been booked. Yes. Oh, Scott, what can, he can't really get out of the way there, can he? He, can't, he couldn't really get out of the way there, but Dean, the fans here, listen to the Bramall Road, they love this fella, Bramall Rain fans down here. Brian Dean, I, I hate to say it, but I think Jan Argo, uh, it's a case of who plays alongside Dean. Fjortov or Couturo. scored against Sunderland last season for Leeds United and it really would put the icing on the cake of this opening day for Sheffield United if they were to uh, hold on a win but also if Dean was to get on the score sheet and Elder feels no way ref but Tatura was certainly again it was from behind the defenders must you know they must remember that if you go from behind you don't get the ball clean it's a free kick. Patterson taking the responsibility of it. Headed away by Ord. Here's Brian D. And the offside flag stays down. It was Cachorro. Looked a certain opening that for Peter Cachorro. I reckon if one of his teammates could speak Russian, they'd be saying, Time Peter, Time Peter. 
because this is a lovely ball from Brian Dean. Sunderland defence push out. Look at the time he's got here on the penalty spot. And goodness me, Perez is a lucky man. Couturo shakes his head, he now realised how much time he had. Brian Dean, the man who set it up. Played wide in his time at Leeds, and we've been talking about Sunderland having goal-scoring problems last season. Well, he was actually joint top scorer in the league for Leeds with Lee Sharp, with the grand total of five goals. I must admit, though, Rob, I couldn't understand him playing. You know, he's not exactly a nifty winger, is he? <laughs> But he has got a lot more ability than what people give him credit for. A good touch for a big fella. And obviously, he heads the ball very well, holds it up well and heads it well. I wonder how much Nigel Spackman is regretting the uh, substitution now, because uh, I think he feels that if uh, Fjortoft had had the opening that Kachuro had just had, it might have been 3-0. Well, I think it can be a little bit harsh. You know, when you're a centre-forward in the box, you don't realise sometimes you have time like that. He needed a help from his teammate. Here's Bobokis, one goal already, he's set up the other goal. He's lined this one up for Dean. And headed behind for the corner by Andy Melville. Well, this fella, second half, a little bit quiet, but suddenly bursts into life again. He looks so comfortable on the ball. Not only does he cross a good ball, strike a good ball, he goes past defenders, gets it to Dean, he doesn't stand and admire it, he gets in the box and just a whisker away. at the edge of the area now. Sheffield United have their latest corner. There's some real wrestling going on between Ord and Dean in the box. Headed away by Quinn. Well, the referee had a good look at that, Rob. I think he felt it was six or one, half a dozen the other. Now he's telling them, calm down. White House, four waiting in the penalty area. Can he pull it back? Oh, Couture has missed another great chance. Well, it could have been four. Churro could have had to, and how bitterly he must be regretting that miss. Well, I'll tell you who's very angry, Richard Ord. Look at the way he just skips past Ord there. Couturo, for sure, has to score there. Seven yards out, but look at defending of Ord. This is not good enough. Peter Reid won't be happy with that. Beautiful cutback from Whitehouse. What a glorious chance that is. Supporters player of the year last season. They'll be uh, asking for the uh, award back if he uh, keeps missing sitters like that. It was interesting there, Rob, because Dean and Ord were having a bit of a bash with each other, weren't they? Tugging, pushing. And Ord was certainly... He was distraught by something, because the way Whitehouse just walked past him for the cutback, goodness me, had that gone in, some of them were bidding. As it is, they still have a glimmer of hope in this game. 20 minutes left. Scott. Ray. Clark to Scott. Cleared by McGrath. Here's Dean. Dean just caught by Richard Aldrosey. He's still away. He's away from Bridges as well. Couturo's waiting. Again, I don't know how, how, how good Couturo's English is, but Dean Whitehouse was right behind him. And all I had to say was leave it, but great work again from Brian Dean. Who says the wide position's a bad one for him? Yeah, good, good strong play again from Dean, and a lovely cross, it has to be said. But Couturo, well, he was backpedalling, wasn't he? when Whitehouse was right behind him, all he had to say was, leave it, leave it. But Ord, again, who's looking tired for me, makes a mistake, but look at the strength of Dean. Now he composes himself. There's two at the far post, Couturo going back, but Whitehouse was right behind him. And Chris Byrne is coming on for Sunderland. And they've taken off Alex Ray, and Byrne is a newcomer to the Sunderland squad this season. He was playing with Macclesfield, helped to shoehorn them into the league at the end of last season. In fact, scored a hat-trick on the last day within 20 minutes at Kettering that uh, helped to clinch them 
that tremendous feat. Yeah, he likes to get forward as well, Rob, and I'm on the snow ones, but it looks as if he's got a little bit of pace as well. well he played in that uh, opening game at the Sunderland Stadium of Light when he produced a, a good save from Edwin van der Sar. They need inspiration from somewhere, Sunderland. I just feel, Rob, it's the width, Sunderland's width, they're not getting the best out of the two wide players. Quinn. And again, Niall Quinn. This is Martin Scott. Too short for Quinn, the header away was by Patterson. Churro and Wayne Quinn initially in each other's way. Down. You're always looking for a goal second half in the first 20 minutes, and it just isn't happening. Sheffield United very happy to sit back, and at the moment they're taking everything that Sunderland can give them. Desperate for a goal, Sunderland. drawing all defeats they've actually got a poor scoring record as well just one goal in their first game for the last five seasons and that was scored by Steve Agnew against his old club Leicester two seasons ago he yeah, loves to get through a lot of work Agnew but today it's mainly been defensive rather than offensive hasn't really performed an attacking role on the right hand side and as we see Gray is the same he hasn't got forward too often with telling crosses on the left Held it up well, Holdsworth against Michael Gray, and he's beaten him. Oh. Great clearing header from Makin, just as Whitehouse arrived. You have to say, tremendous skill. Bobakis. He did so well to hold it up in the first place. It was Holdsworth's skill that seemed to have prized open the Sunderland defence. Well, that's what I was saying about Nigel Spackman, Rob. I think he's actually said to his players, look, if you find yourself in an advanced position, don't worry about it. And great play there from Holdsworth. Unlucky it wasn't three. Yeah, he's got to be delighted with that. Often you see him in an advanced position, but look at this for a lovely little turn. Sells Gray, a complete dummy, picks a beautiful little chip in the box. Whoa, White House, a whisker away. Quarter of an hour to go. Long throw in towards Quinn, but it's Wayne Quinn who's there. Brian Dean. Well, he seems to have the legs on Melville. Orders across to cover. Caturo's darted into the box. He'll stay in there because this is Nicky Marker. Frustrated Scott. Gray, foul by Bobokis. Well, he couldn't impress much more on what he has done in this opening day of the season. Great strength, but now look at the pace. He has a look, Cachero's now arriving and tries to find the Belarus international just too high. Brian Dean. Here's Agnew! Oh! Well, they probably, possibly won't get a better opportunity than that to score in this match. Right in front of the Sunderland fans, they were out of their seats as Agnew goes for the far post. All of a sudden, loses his marker. Has a look, right across Tracy. But that's six inches too wide. The right foot of Agni, that could have put them back in it. A goal at this stage of the game, and who knows what might have happened. Steve Agnew sporting the Attilio Lombardo look, and uh, maybe Peter Reid will be losing his hair with many more misses like that. Yeah, that was that was the one. That had gone in, they were back in it. Deep! I felt it was worth a snapshot, but you can see why Dean is such a favourite here. Bramall Lane has been uh, showing great commitment throughout. Yeah, he looks happy to be back. And his fans basking in the sunshine. 
Well, one set are enjoying it. Of course, both sets in red and white. Some of them fans, well, desperate for a goal. Agnew's cross. Well, at least he's seen a lot more of the ball now, Agnew. Here's Babakis. Kachuro. Given away by Babakis to Agnew. And Patterson in quickly to steal it from Byrne. And here's Dean again. Now, can he crown this performance? Turned away by Makin, who was appealing for the goal kick, but the corner is given. Yeah, good challenge back from Makin, but Dean just took a bit wide there. Decided that the shot, the angle was too acute, decided to come back on himself, but what a threat he's been. Well, just to close things up now, perhaps Sheffield United making a change. They're bringing on Roger Nilsson, and they're taking off Wayne Quinn, who certainly played his part on his debut. Yeah, definitely, for the youngster. You know, I think a little bit about Dean and Babakis, but the youngster played his part today. Babakis' corner headed away by Makin. And Nielsen gets his first touch. Babakis inside Agnew. Oh, ambitious. Yeah, he really is a busy player, isn't he? Do you know what I love about him? He, loves, he looks as if he's so comfortable on both feet. Away by Patterson. I just wonder, they're stinging the tail again. This fella's worked his socks off today, Patterson. They don't want to be losing a goal now. Realise he's not going to be closed down. Has a look, right foot, heading for the top corner. Good touch from Tracy. Michael Gray with the corner. Bridges trying to play Gray in. Yeah, it's a bit tight there, but Gray was calling for it. He wanted it. Just a bit too tight. Michael Gray, you remember this game, opening season, first division, and I remember this Greek guy's against. <laughs> we thought he could be the match winner for Sunderland, but he's opposite Bobokis. What a game he's had. Seems to be an underexploited uh, market, Greek players. We've uh, had Bobokis come in following the lead of Donis at Blackburn. But uh, it seems to be a market that Sheffield United are keen to exploit. They've signed another one, Trainer Delas, the Greek under-21 captain. A deal that's been completed. And he's expected to make his entry into the first team very soon. And the game's changed now, Rob. You know, English clubs are scouring the whole of Europe now. And then you look at Teddy Venables, the whole of the world, over in Australia. Or should I say, Teddy Venables? <laughs> the two Terrors. That's hot out there, but Big Paul, he certainly looked cool enough to me. The fact, he strolled through this game. Ray delivering. Tyler there before Niall Quinn. I think back there, Tyler and Holzoff were prone to the odd mistake. And I think Paul McGrath in between them, with his talking, his experience, might just you know, firm that defence up. 
on this performance, you have to say Sheffield and in for a good season again. Today from the Premiership, Super Sunday, Tottenham against Manchester United, selections permitting, Teddy Sheringham up against his old club, Les Ferdinand and David Ginola for Tottenham, and then Monday Night Football also from North London, Arsenal against Coventry, Sky Sports 1 from 7 o'clock. And Tuesday sees our first offering from the Coca-Cola Cup this season, the first round first leg tie between Queen's Park Rangers and Wolves from 7.30 on Sky Sports 3. Yeah, what a game in prospect this afternoon. It's hot, hot here in Sheffield. I imagine White Hart Lane's going to be red hot. I think Teddy Sheringham's going to feel a bit of the um, the local uh, the local support. Right hot lane then today, without a doubt. Well, I hope they've uh, got the factor 25 on. Time running out for Sunderland now. Now Quinn, desperate to get on the score sheet. Just give me a ball in the box. The right delivery, that's all I need. Scott aiming for him. Here's Here's Kachura. Nielsen. Make it. Challenging with Nielsen. Here's Scott. Steve Agnew, Clark has pushed on ahead. This is Chris Byrne. Soon, but this fella, he's had a cracking match. Well, two candidates will come into the reckoning, no doubt. Um, upended by Carl Tyler. Scott can hit these. Clark might fancy a chance as well, the bender. But they really do need a strike on goal. Tracy's had too little to do in this match. Tracy forced to make that one save from Chris Makin. From the other side now, maybe Martin Scott will give him some work to do. It is Scott, it's too high. Yeah, trying to get curled to the goalkeeper's right hand upright. But now, well, not on target for Martin Scott. And a tough old game from today. And I thought Scott. Gray would be bombing down the left. The thought against a great and Bobokis. And he's really given them both a lot to think about today. It's been a disappointing return to his hometown for Martin Scott, certainly unless there's a dramatic revival within the last four minutes. Scott's family still live in Sheffield, ten minutes from the ground. His father's a United supporter. Conceding the throw in. The word from the referee for Michael Gray just before the throw in is taken. Here it comes from Nielsen. Header away was by Ord. Nicky Marker. Now, Dean, this is his chance, but he's offside. Yeah, well, that would be the dream return, wouldn't it? And the linesman was adamant. Offside, Brian. Sorry, pal. But again, 
Sunderland push out. As the ball's driven in, you can clearly see two Sheffield United players in offside position, but a good finish from Dean. Well, he may have thought he'd done it then. But Dean still waits for his first competitive goal since returning to Sheffield United. Well, Ni Nigel Spikeman must be delighted with his performance. A few more of these, and I think he's bored the directors of no option. Well, the manager's job was advertised. Joe Royal and Lou Macari continue to be linked to Royal speculation. Being given weight by the fact that Willie Donachie, his former assistant at Oldham and Everton, is now on the coaching staff here at Bramall Lane. But uh, public opinion counts for a lot, and Nigel Spackman stocks will be raised if they can uh, continue to produce performances like this. Dean again is offside. And let's have your man of the match now. But well, this fella here has had a tremendous game, and maybe had he got himself on the score sheet. I can't give it to Brian Dean today, it has to be Bobokas. Superb supplier and a great goal scorer. Scott. Well, one match doesn't make a season, and Sunderland are hoping that this isn't an omen for the forthcoming campaign. promoted two years ago they began with a defeat at home by Leicester and only won one of their opening five league matches lying 19th in early September but they lost just one of their next 16 and it's that sort of run that Sunderland will be hoping for to propel themselves into contention in a very competitive first division this season but this will be an excellent start for Sheffield United improved his game so much since the transfer to Leeds United. I think he's back here as a better player. Brian Dean was on the staff the last time that Sheffield United gained promotion. His, his influence to tell again, but what is, he's brought his influence to bear on this game and he's doing so again. Great skill from Dean! And Perez foils him! But well, that was a wonderful piece of build-up with Bobokis and Dean this time. I tell you what, Rob, I think there's a few managers on their way to Greece on the plane. What a player this fella looks. And Dean, lovely turn, but you have to say that's a good start from Perez. Into stoppage time, Perez prevents the score from being widened still further. Whitehouse with a corner above Cachorro and Scott. This is Patterson feeding it back in, the flag is up! Dean's header came back off the bar and uh, even had it gone in, it wouldn't have counted, but the referee has allowed the advantage, seeing as Sunderland have ferried it clear. Well, no goals for Dean today, but you can bet your boots on it. There's going to be a few coming in the forthcoming weeks. Scott for Sunderland. Tracy's ball, despite the pressure of Niall Quinn. Bobokis. Gray. Bobokis again. Foul by Michael Gray. It's one way of starting them, but it really does, it does look a complete player. This fella. Good in the air, we've, we've noticed that today. Good defender, strong, and two great feet. Well, how loves to get forward. You say how Kendall. 
just set the wheels in motion for the transfer of uh, Bobokas, and it looks quite a, a lasting legacy that uh, the former manager has left, despite the uh, unpopularity of his move to Goodison Park. The deal was actually completed after his departure. But Bobokas looks quite a find after his move from AEK Athens. Well, how would we mind the McGuinnessen, to be honest? It's certainly impressed me today. It's a long season, no? Ricky Marker. And it's a great start to the season for Sheffield United to banish the memory of their playoff misery in May. And it's the new man, Vasilis Borbokis, who really has got the fans off to an excited start and provided the sort of tonic that they required made the first goal, scored the second, and ensured a winning debut second time around for Brian Dean, hugely popular figure, brought back from Leeds, had a goal chalked off for offside, but certainly played his part in a win that will lift the confidence of United's fans who were so depressed by Crystal Palace at Wembley in May. Final score, Sheffield United 2, Sunderland 0. Rob Hawthorne and Alan Brazil in the commentary box. Yes, the perfect start for Nigel Spatman and Sheffield United after their Wembley misery. It could have been a lot more than 2-0 by the end and plenty for Peter Reid to ponder, not least where are the goals going to come from.